What's up guys and welcome back or to the channel. So first of all, I want to apologize for the whole January thing going on here. Um, we're going to get back to more consistent content here shortly as we're finishing this up. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, first of all, if you don't, head over there. We're about 7,000. So I need 7,000 of you to go follow me on my Instagram, 6-7-Lime, and only like 150 of you to go follow me on my personal. We're going to hit 20,000 and 100,000 on both of those. So if you aren't following me over there, head over there, follow me. It helped me out. I'd appreciate it. Um, I want to hit those two milestones. And uh, with your help, I could do it quite quickly. So I would truly appreciate that. Also, if you're not subscribed, get down there and subscribe because the content in the months ahead, I promise you, will blow your mind. So over the past few days, I've been knocking out a little bit of stuff here on the pink truck. Um, figuring out a few final things, just normal motor maintenance performance wise, doing all that. Um, like I said, still got a couple things in store for this. Um, I was thinking about factory flares the more I see this, but I want to see it with the bed caps on first, add that plastic add that you know depth on top of the bed um, before i get the little factory thin flares so i'll wait out on those um other than that like i said a couple surprises for this that you don't know about that you'll probably just see in the reveal because it's a very controversial mod that we're going to do to this but i'm i'm confident i can make it clean so uh stay tuned for that but we're going to be finishing this up here very very soon it's about 18 degrees outside so please ignore the heater yeah we're almost there guys like i said the, the pile of parts is thinning and thinning new amp for this thing in the back comes tuesday so we'll knock out the rest of the interior get that other door panel on and before this bed gets fully bolted down and re-cleared i may actually take these tires off slide the bed back and uh, i'm thinking about putting a fast fuel system on this truck we fixed the uh, long crank issue honestly um, half of that has to do with the batteries uh, it actually just running it like this the other day with the lights on and stuff killed the battery so we couldn't get it to start but hooking up a set of jumper cables literally just turn the key and it fires but now we're dealing with the loss of power and with the the new banks cold air intake dirty air filter is not an issue so in this instance, the only other thing that would be at fault on this truck is getting fuel. Uh, these old trucks are pretty simple. So this truck also has miles on it and the in tank, in tank screens on the, uh, like the, the fuel, not really a pump, it's just like the suction tubes. Um, yeah, they gotta be clogged. And then I'm gonna do the one under the hood. But then I also thought, why not just throw a fast on it, elimin eliminate a lot of that and um, Everything should be good to go. But I'm gonna show you guys right now. I mean, hopefully I didn't kill the battery. Like I said, I feel like these batteries are just old and weak because they're not either holding a charge or whatever. Also, I noticed that this brake controller sometimes likes to light up at random times. So I may just disconnect this uh, because I don't know if that's drawn power as well. But we're gonna throw this on. I'll show you this. Uh, you can see where the battery's at. Down there, kind of low. Um, even after it said running all day yesterday, I actually took this down the street. It drives pretty darn good. Um, see, I think half of it, honestly, is that battery level. It, it's at like nine to 10 volts all the time to start, which really does suck. Uh, so I might get two new batteries and possibly upgrade the starter and the fuel system on this. And I think all of our issues should go away. I will say, however, this thing looks so good with the wood lariat door panels. I gotta find, I'm missing one of these. I think I have the passenger side, need the driver. Locating the odds and ends parts on a full build right at the end is so crazy, but uh, it's around here somewhere. If not, we'll get one ordered. Um, so yeah. Also, I actually took the SCT off of it yesterday. Uh, we took the DP tuner off. I took the SC tun SCT tuner off and I've got the Banks tuner hooked up right now actually over here and um it's on the performance whatever tune this for some reason like i said i think i think honestly we're missing the fuel we got to be missing the fuel those things like i said this thing's got quarter million miles on it those filters i guarantee have never been changed in the tank those got to be those got to be clogged literally all the even on the sct all the icp ipr all of those 
percentages and sensors are running perfectly. Um, so the last thing is literally, it's got it's literally got to be a fuel issue. So either a weak fuel pump, or uh, those filters in the tanks are clogged, or the fuel filter under the hood needs changed bad, uh, because it's just like I said. New batteries should fire right up and uh, the lack of power should clear up if we're getting all the fuel. So a fast will supply constant, adequate pressure and also uh, separate a lot of air and water out of the system. Uh, so I'll get one on order and then uh, next week sometime uh, we'll be throwing it on this truck and I'm hoping that that clears everything up. Also, I do have a TikTok, so follow me over there. I just uh, posted one real quick of this thing. Ooh, it looks honestly, uh, it honestly looks really, really good. Like I said, a couple things, definitely missing a wiper. Uh, and honestly, like I said, just drove it up. That's the first time you guys actually seen a roller of this thing. But uh, driving it, it's kind of, there's some satisfaction to it. And I, oh man, I can't wait to actually get it out, get the bumpers on, tail lights, all that stuff. Just finish it up. Also on the track bars, they do twist when I drive. Uh, that's because, well, completely noob coming to Heim joints. Uh, well, the two Heim joints, one needs to be one way and the other one needs to be the other way. And then they'll pretty much fight each other and um, we'll stay straight. So I gotta loosen those jam nuts and put, you know, twist the one Heim like towards me and the other one away. And those things should stay sh straight up and down um, as we drive. So. Got to fix that. Texted Dalton and he gave me the uh, solution to that. So that's going to look so, so good. Like I said, can't wait to get this thing final polished, final layer of clear on the bed, and it'll really pull it all together. I know it looks a little faded right now, but um, it's going to look so good shortly. We're going to get back to that in a second. But if you guys have been a long time follower of the channel, you know what this is. This has been sitting in this shop for a long time. The dudes who own it, they're like, hey, we just kind of want to sell it. We want to get it, you know, we want to get it done and off our hands. So we're going to lay down some paint real quick. And I know about 5% of you are kind of interested in the old Cobra kit car uh, Mustang replica situation. So I'm going to give you guys a little taste of that, show you guys what we got to do. Obviously, this is like a 19 something something 60, I don't know, factory five Cobra replica. These things when done, I know you're like looking at it like what? But these things when they're done can have a price tag over a hundred thousand dollars, which is crazy. I'll put a couple right here for you. Uh, yeah, that's that's absolutely nuts seeing that this can turn into a hundred thousand dollar piece of work so quickly. So that's why we're cranking the shop up. It's at about 77 or seven, yeah, 77 right now. Obviously the warmer the better when it comes to paint and um, especially when you've got paint of this. You guys let me know in the comments below about this. Right now go down there and guess how much this entire gallon 
It's obviously PPG, Deltron, love PPG paints. I know some people use Sickens, all that stuff. But I've got a couple family friends and stuff that work at PPG and you know, gotta support the people you know the most. So obviously all of this shop line, um, this is their like, the JP is their middle, the JB, there's one around here. That's like their baseline, this is the middle, and then, then this is their high end. But guess in the comments below how much this gallon of paint costs. Ford North America, hot pepper, red, metallic. Comes on new Broncos, Rangers. Maybe Super Duties, don't hold me to that, but um, at least I know the Rangers and the Broncos, it's, it's an awesome red. So like I said, because of how much those things go for when done, um, if you're changing the color of something, you can use a mid, mid, mid-line, mid-tier paint because it's not going to matter. If you're trying to match factory parts, using high-end paint is the only way you'll get technically a direct match. Um, I can show you two things right here. One's a high-quality paint and one's a mid-level paint of the same colors. I'll actually show you that after this just so you can kind of see. The pigments, the dyes, the whatever in this, this, this whole gallon here is all of that. When you go mid-level and lower level, most of it is like a resin, a filler, to make more paint out of nothing because you're literally cutting, you know, you're cutting the cost of the paint. You still get the same color, the same stuff, but sometimes you don't have the same pigments and all that because those are what's expensive. But if you haven't guessed already, this gallon of paint right here, obviously I shot a couple, I shot a test panel already, but this gallon of paint right here is $1,700. Yeah, so you don't want to drop it, you don't want to spill it, you don't want to waste it. $1,700, so almost $2,000 for this gallon of paint. The paint on the first gen, that's going on the first gen, I will tell you, is very similar in cost, which is crazy. But, um, you know, full out, like, high-end paint jobs, you want to use, obviously, high-end paint. Gets all the pigments, lays a lot nicer, more coverage, all of that. But let's open this so you guys can see what we're dealing with. And then I'll show you guys the comparison between the two of like a high-end and the not so high-end paint. So the, yeah, this is the hot, red, hot, I almost said hot red pepper, but it's hot pepper red. Like I said, Broncos and Rangers. Here, well, oh, those were stuck. But here, this is. Oh, my phone's over there, do you have your phone? Yeah. And then that's obviously in like indirect light, but indirect light, this shines. But yeah, this shines in direct light. This is what you get with the high quality paints. You have all the pigments, all of the pearls and pigments are just top quality and all that. And plus, now that I think about it, because this is so high quality, I probably won't even need to use the whole gallon to paint this car between the shell, the trunk, the hood, the doors, all that. But this looks incredible. So we're gonna get spraying that in a little bit. We wanna show you a comparison real quick. Perfect. Another tip a lot of people do, a lot of pro painters do, and I know a lot of you in the comments are probably gonna agree with me right now. If you have paint, you are a pro painter, all of that. You can also cut costs in your paint job, and in this instance, this is base baseline paint. This is JB like base of the base. I don't even usually use this, but in this instance, you could save a lot of money because a paint like this, well, a quart of it, which this is a quart of paint. This is actually a, a Bikini Pearl, another Chrysler color, but um, a quart of paint of this in this is like mm, $400. Yeah, so same concept. High-end paints all the way up, correct pigments, a lot of money. But a trick, a trick is to use the cheap paint, get your base covered. So you pretty much, I, I wouldn't even say use this as a primer, but you use this as your, your, your base color. Um, so you put your two coats on with this. This is actually for just like color matching and stuff. Get the bumpers and tail lights and headlights right on a blue streak truck. Um, but what you can do, and get your base down. So you're gonna have the blue, if you cleared it, it would match the truck. But when you get close, the pigments, the pearls, some are different, some are just not the same, and you'll see that right here. So here is the base of base, as you can see. Look at that, you still get all the blue streak pearl, the metallics, you get them all. But I wanna show you something pretty neat here in a second. 
when this is like the base paint so obviously gonna match the truck however when you go to like the high end like this is only a half pint and I feel like this was about 150 bucks which is crazy a half pint but with what I'm doing and need to do with it when you top that base blue with this you get the 100% OEM match using a lot less paint and a lot cheaper because you already have the blue you're just orienting all the correct pearls and metallic with this on the top coat. So I know a lot of you watch my channel and a bunch of you have taken on your own paint jobs. Um, met a bunch of you have, who have done that and I appreciate that. I love that, doing all that, you know, at home in your garage, doing that, painting your own stuff. It's awesome. Um, and I love that for a lot of you. So if you ever want to try this and or you've done one before and you want to do another one, get it higher quality, semi-pro tip here. The real painters in the audience will see, and hopefully the rest of you do too. Also, the smells are completely different. This is like straight, don't smell paint, but this is like straight paint, and you could tell it's just kind of filler in here. But look at this, you could see more fine, more fine metallics, the OEM pearls, all of that. You could see that in this lid. Same exact blue you can see no matter what you spray this on the truck it'll match but when you get really down to the nitty and gritty of it you can see how big those you know those particles are those pearls and how they shine compared to the OEM even when it lays look at the difference less spread out more fine just just right there. But hopefully you guys can see that. And then, yeah, hopefully you guys can see this. And then we'll move back to the other one. You can see the pearls, metallics are a lot more, you know, I don't wanna say girthy, but a lot larger. They said that it does the job. So if you're gonna go a full out, you know, if you're gonna do a full out paint job on a vehicle, you can get away with a base of base color. You can get away with a medium color. But if you're trying to match OEM, the colors will match, but when you get up on it, you'll see that the pearls and metallics and all that are, 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 are oriented differently. So that just said, little pro tip, little knowledge. I like sharing stuff like that with you guys so you can put that into your own projects. You're gonna try and color match some stuff yourself. Um, flat colors. As you can see, the pink truck, this is a mid-grade. So obviously the pearls and metallics off the 2010 Challenger are not 100%, but because it's a full over paint job and the truck was $3,500 to start, it wouldn't make sense putting, I guess I used three of, the, three of these gallons, probably could use two um, otherwise, or if I wanted to get a top coat of like the high-end paint, I could. But shooting it all over, like I said, this is about 400 bucks a gallon. If I went all the way out, I'd probably spend four times as much on that paint job than I did just by going mid, and because I was covering everything, it all looks uniform. And while we're on the topic, I know a lot of you are gonna ask about, okay, flat colors, like my truck, uh, the Jeep, stuff like that. Um, here's the gecko green that I'm gonna color match the entire Wrangler with. Um, Probably went a little overboard on the paint, but you can never have too much. Especially when you go, like I said, mid. This whole gallon was like 300 some dollars, so it's not bad to have extra. And obviously, when you go a little cheaper, coverage is a little bit less. So, ooh, hold on, let me mix it up. But I guess it's a good example here. If you look at this right now, this is, like I said, a mid-grade paint. But you open this up after it sat for a minute, all the resins and stuff don't come to the top. It's all pigment, all color. So when you're paying for cheaper paint, you're obviously getting a, a filler, but obviously you get similar results in the end. When it comes down to flat colors, obviously you just gotta make sure the color matches. Um, base coats are very important when it comes to either light colors, dark colors, of uh, no pearls, no metallics, um, because you'll get a different shade no matter what. Like I need to spray this over a white sealer, otherwise my Jeep will not match whatsoever. Same thing with the truck. Those greens um, and stuff like that, the very light color, you gotta use, gotta use light sealers and primers. So colors like this, 
like I said, there's no extra pigments, extra, you know, stuff to worry about. However, like the toners and stuff used obviously are on the lower end. There's less of it, stuff like that. You still get the same color in the end. But, um, you know, if I did the whole expensive paint for this, um, you could probably spray a lot less and do that a lot easier, but you're spending a lot more. So uh, it's really up to you on that point. But yeah, this color is the... Uh, but you'll see us break this can open very shortly as well. We'll bring the Wrangler in here, get that torn apart. And then I think I got a color for the Bronco. I just got to figure a shade of it and um, a specific color code. And uh, we'll be good on that. But you'll see us open this up shortly because this color is actually electric. And if you've seen a fully color match Gecko Wrangler, uh, it looks very sharp. Second layer of clear, it looks phenomenal. Um, but um, the typical uh, order DoorDash, gotta go home and get it. But um, let's see if she cold starts. She's been sitting out here for probably a good five, six, seven, eight hours, nine even. Let's hope she fires. Wait to start. Oh, show up. Oh, almost. So cold for the 7.3. We're definitely gonna get those filters looked at this week, throw a fast on this guy, and hopefully get this exhaust connected because one, I really want to see the stack on it, and two, it's so loud right underneath the cab.
All right guys, well it's actually like the next day here and um, I let the paint cure on that kit car like fully overnight, did the whole thing. Um, and I'm gonna go show you it now. It looked, it, it, it turned out really sharp. Um, I was actually gonna do some stuff today and possibly even finish some of those kit car pieces, but uh, until just now, um, it, it did not stop. It did not stop snowing. So um, yeah. Um, uh, Unfortunately, this is the only thing I got to drive in the winter at the moment, which sucks um, because the Bronco and the Jeep have never seen any salt. This is the only vehicle that has. I do want to redo it and, and maybe add some special things to this truck. So I know a lot of you are going to cringe, but don't worry. But don't worry. Um, yeah, I also ordered a shifter extension. I've got that and a purple shift knob. I just wanted to see, you know, I... It's like a 10 inch extension so i kind of want to just see how it is shifting that thing like up high so you may see that in the next video too uh because i've always wanted to do that and uh i'm just going to do it and it's always removable so yeah and i'm not one for different color shift knobs or replacement shift knobs but just want to spice it up this thing looks nuts Oh yeah. So here it is guys. Here's the hot red pepper Ford color on this old technically Ford but uh Shelby replica kit car. Um it looks so so sick all the way around. Look at that when it hits the light it just changes. Um I am I, I'm blown away at how this looks. Now it's kind of frustrating for me because I saw this thing in like a red primer the whole time forever as it was here. Um, and uh, it's also now red again, but it's a better shade of red. But this is, this, this is the crazy angle here when you actually see the light on it and how it actually shifts. It's, it's crazy. Look at that. Just even here, oh. And it's like not even done yet. And the, the thing is, it looks so good already, but after I still gotta wet sand this and then stripe it and then clear the whole thing again three more times. So this thing is gonna have incredible depth and, and just uh, when it's polished out, how this is gonna look is just gonna be absolutely just stupid because I can already tell you just how this looks when it's all polished and like 100% flat. This color kit car, it just hasn't been seen because one, this is a new color, but two, I'm just blown away that whether it's a truck or something else, like I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but like no matter how weird or different it is, for some reason it always comes out just unique and just crazy and, and just stunning like I can't I can't even like I'm so actually kind of glad I picked this color because like I said when it's when it's done when it's done that in the sun itself like even in a parking lot or whoever ends up with this thing like this polished out is like show car, like Meekum auction kind of look, which is crazy to me. It, I am so just excited of how this thing is actually going to fully, fully come about. And really quick, we got a dope idea for the 6.4 over here. So um, be patient. It's going to be, it's going to be nasty. Um, it's really, what we do with this is really going to kind of show what I can really, really do. Um, so I'm really excited about this. Um, stay tuned for it. I'm actually coming back here right now to see if I can use this tailgate. Um, hmm. Needs a plastic piece. There's some dents, scratches. Is that just, no, that's scratches. And then, hmm. I know the bed's dented, but I think this tailgate might be savable. Ah, uh, nah, it's dented down there, darn it. 
thought we had one, guys. I thought we had one. All right, and finally on this, um, figured a few things out. I'm probably gonna throw. Mm, might do that tomorrow. I don't know. I got, got I got the weather stripping for that, and I just need to put the door panel back on. That amp is about 14 and a half inches wide. The one that's coming and will arrive tomorrow, finally, um, is about 13 and a half inches wide. So between, it's gonna literally have to go here. This is where a seat belt mounts, and then right here is where the seat bracket is. So between that, power and ground could run. The seat belt can bolt right there. Speaker wires will run to the sub. And then obviously inside the box, we'll do the whole dual voice coil, like running them at, I think, what is it, four or two ohms? One of the two, I gotta look. Now, now you guys are making me look. Running them at two ohms, do all that with the dual voice coils inside the box, and then one connection to uh, the sub there. So we'll be able to run the wires sh either straight to the box or I'll do it, run them under the carpet, make it all neat or whatever there. But the rest of it, um, four channel will go here, all the speaker wire for front, rear, and then front, rear. We'll put that in the four channel and then right here is where our power and ground split will come. So I'm gonna try and run this nice. And then because the amps are gonna be over there, which is literally the only place we can place them, I'm gonna go both the power and the grounds here, go underneath the carpet. If I gotta run it around this bracket, I will run over there and then trim it and then go up through the carpet both ways and uh, make it super clean and tidy over there. Just so there's not visible wires everywhere. Um, and that's literally the only place I can because one, you can't really mount anything to the back of the cab because of how this rear seat mounts. It literally slides down and into these brackets here that we welded on when we did the interior conversion. But yeah, it sits down and in there, so nothing can really be placed behind the seat or on the wall, so it's all gotta be under. And with the extended cab, we are doing the almost impossible because this is the only sub box I could find for it, like with a lot of searching, and um, it tens are pretty much the biggest you can do back here because uh, it literally goes underneath the seat on the floor and still sticks out a little bit just to get it to work because there's no room in an extended cab. But the extended cab long bed looks sharp, so I'm all for it. But other than that, guys, this should be done. Interior will be completed in the next video, that's for sure, especially with that door panel. And uh, I did, in fact, order a fast fuel system. It should be here tomorrow as well. So in the next video, not only will the audio be completed, we're gonna try and uh, start tackling this. Good, constant, filtered fuel. I, I just want it on this truck. And it'll really help out with the longevity of this motor too. Uh, these things properly cared for go over a million miles consistently. So um, that's the plan with this. And um, yeah, gonna do that. So slide that back, fast in, and then uh, we'll wrap all of this up. Like I said, guys, I really wanted to um, get that shifter in and, the, and, and finish the rest of the pink truck. But I, honestly, like I said, waiting on those two parts, really, shifter for this and the uh, amp for that but um, we got that kit car rolling and it, it's gonna be done and out of here like this finally so uh, I'm excited for that get that out of here and start a, a slew of new and just crazy projects on this channel and they're more than what you see right here you guys don't even know what you're about to uh, witness happen in this next year and uh, I'm excited for you because it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting so if you guys enjoyed this video shoot a thumbs up if you haven't been here before please get down there click subscribe drop me a comment while you're down there and take care and I will see you guys in the next one